Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Sub Tours. I'm Mai. I'm Misha. And I'm Angel. We will have lag. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of their special in studio recording. Yes, <laughs> we're back in person, yes. in the flesh, and not without laughing fits around 10 minutes before recording. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. We tried so hard. Somebody decided to, decided to scratch his chin in front of the mic. We are professionals. ASMR. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That is the sound of Misha thinking. Yes. <laughs> I can't. I can't. It's so different. This feels like when you put three kids in a recording studio, which is not far off. Without any direction. <laughs> and like top of the top of the line equipment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and like everything is just in real time. Yes. Yeah, but it's a special episode today because, well, if we have to say it, happy birthday, Angel! Happy Thank birthday! You. Thank you. As of recording, not sure when this is gonna be released, but as of recording, as of recording, Angel's. how old are you? Twenty-five. Fuck you! In your fuck face. <laughs> What does in your fuck face mean? Why do you lie? You can't lie. You're not 25. Plus 10. Oh. Mm. PV, please edit out the plus 10 part. <laughs> Thank you. As of recording, not sure when this is going to be released, but as of recording. As of recording. Just, How old are you? 25. Oh. Mm. All right. So, yes, happy birthday, Angel. And I think it's the perfect episode to be talking about in in person and well it, it's also special for you because you're a huge fan of this yes. guy mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. are if you guys can see my cell phone case oh you can show it on a video yes you can oh I hit the mic <laughs> child <laughs> this child so yes we're talking about Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse mm-hmm. yes he has it on his tumbler as well you didn't wear the shoes today because it was raining okay oh, good, good choice I had to save the shoes because you know of course, you did wear the shoes when we watched the film at an advanced screening at the Columbia Pictures office. Thank you to our friends at Columbia Pictures Philippines for inviting us. Woo-hoo. We had a great time. Andrew wore his shoes. Yeah. <laughs> we had a great time. Andrew wore his shoes. <laughs> he really had to just say it. His Spidey Jordans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, speaking of Jordans, you can listen to our episode on air, the previous one, yep. if you're interested in shoes. And Andrew wasn't there. But that's besides the point. At least you had the shoes. It's yes. Okay. We talked about shoes. We talked about movies, and we talked about the goat. So, yes. <laughs> yes. What you see the Michael Jordan sticker on my Tumblr, right? Ooh, good save. Good save. I'm a fan of the sport, not of the one player. Safe. Oh, very safe. Safe answer. Yes. <laughs> safe answer. Safe okay. answer. <laughs> Back to Spider Man. <laughs> so this is uh, the much awaited sequel from the first Spider Man into the Spider Verse mm-hmm. film in 2018, and I love the first one. That was great. That that won the animated uh, the, the the Academy Award for best animated feature. It won at the BAFTAs. It won at the Golden Globes. Everybody loved that movie. It was phenomenal. So in short, it was pretty hard to top. Hmm. But, but. <laughs> look at but. us, wow. look at us talking at the same time. In sync. <laughs> oh my god! An actual eye contact can mean cues. I got goosebumps. Ooh. No Ooh. latency issues here. Yes. Ah, here. So yes, happy. Yes, we should do this more often. Anyway, yes. Back to the movie. <laughs> uh, this uh, sequel was directed by Joaquim De Santos, Camp Powers, and Justin K. Thompson. Mm-hmm. Who are responsible so, for some of our favorite animation over the last, what, 20 years now? 20 years. Like, uh, Joaquim Dos Santos um, directed some episodes of Legend of Korra, of Justice, Justice League, League Unlimited. Unlimited. And um, just a lot of good stuff. With all due apologies to um, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who wrote and co-produced this film, same as the first one. Um, I mistakenly said that they directed it in my written review. I apologize for that. But I you just, know, pang, ano, uh, venue to para apologize yung podcast natin. It's a good thing the Philippine Star corrected it within a day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No, but shameless plugs aside, I had a fantastic time with this because um, those uh, Miller and Lord, they also wrote and directed the Lego movie, which <gasps> I enjoyed. Yes. And their sense of humor is all over this thing. And 
you see also why the movie needed three directors because oh, there's just so much shit happening it's in this movie. Fucking insane! It is. You, you wouldn't believe the amount of pop culture references they put in. Just the, aside, aside from that, the art style was just the art direction in general. <sighs> it was phenomenal. And it's like right after watching this movie, my first thought was like, "What fucking drugs are these people on?" And, and how do we get some? I the, know. the first the first thing that I told Misha was, "How can you say overindulgent without being overindulgent?" It mm-hmm. had the perfect balance. It wasn't overwhelming. No. I, I don't know how they did it. How it was like so the scope was insane. It was huge. It was so over the top. It crossed universes and dimensions, timelines, franchises. But you never get lost. You no. never get lost and it's not overwhelming. Okay, so uh, before we can get more into what we thought about it, uh, we can talk about uh, the synopsis or probably where we jumped off from the first one. So... Yes, we're looking at Misha. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Misha, the synopsis <laughs> man. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. okay, fine. <laughs> Condense this movie in less than five minutes. At the, damn it. Huh. Stop it. Stop it. Don't do that. No, don't, don't look at me. It's weird. <laughs> we can do it now. No. Oh my God, the sexual okay. tension. No. Do it. No. Okay, so in this movie, um, Miles Morales is um, trying to balance his responsibilities as a student, as a superhero, and basically all that Spider-Man stuff of trying to balance all your responsibilities and trying to figure out what's the most important thing to you. And I like that he it's still a big part of his character, how he's trying to be his African-American and his Puerto Rican self. And he's trying to do good for his family because they want him to go to a good school. They want him to graduate, get a good job. But he's just never around. He's not in class. And the movie opens up where his parents have been dragged in the guidance counselor's office. And they don't know that Miles is off saving the day. He's fighting a bad guy known as The Spot, who is like... Z-list of villains. In absolutely the, Z-list. In, like, in the books. I saw him on movie. screen. I mean, I saw him in the toy stores. I was telling Andro, like, really? The Spot? But is it that that how low we've gotten <laughs> that we've gotten to the spot? But 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 but. But, <laughs> but what we don't know is that the spot is pulling. Um, he's basically doing a jet Li from the one. Oh or, my god! And no, it's true. It is. It is like find all of whatever. Find all your alternate versions. Kill and them. Get their powers. Yeah. Right. Well, so he's yeah. pulling the one. The one. The one. And. And he becomes a big multiversal threat who has to be put down by like this army of spider people. And um, among those spider people is the love of Miles' life, Gwen Stacy. Spider Gwen, or Ghost Spider if you prefer. And um, she pops back into his life at like the most inconvenient time when Miles' father is being promoted. And there's a party for his father. And Miles isn't there because he's hanging out with a girl. He's saving the world. He's doing all these uh, random things. Teenager things. Teenager things. And so they think. <laughs> so they think. And basically, Miles has to go all in on this whole multiverse thing because he thinks he's helping out a girl. Oh. And um, I mean, if stuff it was, happens. If if you're like 15 years old, would you? What jump off a roof to follow Haley Steinfeld? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, maybe if I had spider powers, I don't know. Let's say in this case you had. <laughs> I would. Mm, fair enough. So yeah, that's basically what it's about. A lot of crazy things that are kind of hard to condense without spoiling yeah, anything because that's like scratching just the surface yeah, of it there's so much that happens there are multiverses to talk about here so yeah that's basically it um, from jumping off from the first movie it also made me feel like insane because everything that was going on the art style would change and mm-hmm. then just how fast all the shots and camera movements and mm-hmm. direction were like it's what you would expect from a Spider-Man movie so swift so um, in your face and yes. all the very smart quips that you can yep. hear from Spider-Man it, it, this movie women. down to its soul is very Spider Man. Like the, the last movie was kind of conservative. We only had like five Spider people. You, you call that conservative? <laughs> okay, but really? At, at the time, at it was the time, it was yeah, it was insane. It was mind blowing. And we had in, in the last movie, you only had like little glimpses of the alt- alternate universes with all the different little art styles. Yeah, we had a cameo mm-hmm. of one character who plays a very big role in this movie. 
And here in this one, we spent a lot of time in the alternate universes. We're not in Brooklyn anymore. And every new universe they go to has just this incredible art direction. Every world has its own dedicated look and feel. And it's just insane. This is the movie that Multiverse of Madness wishes it was. Oof. I, I agree. I'd have to agree. Mm. I like Multiverse of Madness as a Sam Raimi movie, but I, as I a like, multiverse I like, movie, I like, not really. Yeah, I like true. Multiverse of Madness as a Sam Raimi demo reel. I like it demo as a Sam. Uh, it it okay. really is a demo reel of Sam Raimi. I'll like, add to that. It's a Sam Raimi demo reel for a sequel to WandaVision. It's not a multiverse Doctor Strange movie. Yes, mm. it tried to be. But it, it found was a stealth flat. sequel to WandaVision. Yeah. yeah, for some reason, like Wanda kind of like f- stole the spotlight at some moment. Yes. So, you know, the, on- the only part where it was like m- multiverse was like when they were jumping universes and you had these tiny, tiny glimpses. Like there was one part where they became paint and there was one part where they were in the future. They were in that one universe where red means green. Mm-hmm. But that that's as far as multiverse of madness yeah. went. I liked, I liked how... In comparison to that, this movie had in one of the opening fight sequences, you had you had Gwen Stacy in her universe, which had the whole treatment of her universe looking like it was painted out of watercolors, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. fighting a misplaced vulture who looked like a Da Vinci sketch. Exactly, like <laughs> parchment amazing. paper and they, everything. Yep, mm-hmm, that, that mm-hmm. had me like, whoa. Yes. They didn't even color it in. It had all the sketch guides, mm-hmm. you know, structural guides for the drawings. And that was like mind blowing. And he but, had an Italian accent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you knew, you clearly knew it was, you clearly knew it was misplaced. You clearly knew it was misplaced, mm-hmm. yet it was so cohesive with everything that was happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It worked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so hard to do that. Mm-hmm. I think that's the beauty of animation. That's something that live action just can't catch up to sometimes because mm-hmm. with animation, you're kind of free to just put into paper what you're imagining without the limitations of like human physics For or sure. human capabilities of acting and everything. So at least with this, that's what I find refreshing because let's let's address the um, superhero fatigue that's been happening mm-hmm. with a lot of us recently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there just have been so many um, superhero movies over the past decade that it's nothing new anymore. That mm-hmm. nothing is that spectacular unless it is really good. So this might be a superhero movie in essence. Yes, it, it really is. But... At least this has the freedom to just do whatever it wants. And they d- didn't just stick to one style and just make it a straight up animated movie. This really explored seamlessly the concept of multiverses yes. and different art styles, which can make, which can really differentiate the multiverses. Mm-hmm. You know what, um, what this movie, what, what impression this movie gave me was that the filmmakers for this movie you know, felt like they were playing more than they were working. Kind of. That's, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it right? felt like they were just having so much fun doing this and it showed. Super. It felt like controlled chaos, honestly. Yes. Like in all the best ways. I think yeah. that's a, the perfect description for this movie. Controlled chaos. Yeah. And, it wasn't, nice. and it wasn't just um, we mentioned earlier how every world had its own art design, its mm-hmm. own look and its own feel. And um in the previous film, it was more about the people from all these wacky dimensions coming to a relatively grounded version of Earth. Because <laughs> Miles lives in Brooklyn, right? <laughs> and it was fun seeing a noir version. It was fun Which seeing. Which was a, Nicolas Cage, right? Yes, yes, it was. Fucking Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage. It was fun seeing a spider pig. It was fun, fun seeing a spider Gwen. But in this one, we take our quote unquote regular guy, Miles, and we get his reaction to actually being in all those multiverses that he thought that he had saved the world from. Yeah. And um, I love the places that they go with this, especially like the first alternate dimension that Miles sees, which is the home of Spider-Man India. <laughs> M- Mumbata! My favorite! I love Indian Spider-Man so mm-hmm. much and how he rants. That is also a personal rant. You don't call it chai tea. It's just chai. You don't say ATM machine either. Yeah. And they pointed it out. I know. Yes. You don't I say appreciated charity. it. You're just, just saying TT. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. It's funny coming from like Mr. T. <laughs> I know, right? I pity the fool. Oh my God. Sorry. Uh, I just had to. Yeah. 
So sure. yeah, it was really fun, and um, I love how a Spider um, Indian Spider Man was voiced by, of course, Karan Sony. Is that how you say his name? I hope I'm saying I'm pronouncing it. Right. The dude from Deadpool. Yes, the, the, the Deadpool's cab driver. cab driver. Yes, I love that guy. He's, <laughs> He's my so favorite funny. out of the thousands of Spider people you see in this movie. He is my favorite. Cause he's so gosh darn charming. I know, just his voice, right? It like, well, yes, the animated yeah. design, but it helps. I the, like. The whole Indian um, uh, inspired spider yeah. suit was cool and his yeah. weapon and stuff. But yeah, his voice is just... You know, so like I like the fact that it's not just a gimmick that, because it's the setting. Like mm-hmm. the character himself mm-hmm. is vastly different from Miles. He's yeah. vastly different from Spider-Punk. Mm-hmm. So yep. th- that's what kept it interesting because, you know, you know how overwhelming it can be to add new characters in every movie but they were still able to keep the balance and focus with Miles and in Gwen and mm-hmm. it was crazy because like in this movie like every scene they're throwing something new at you yes yep. but like, I, 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 I I couldn't get enough of it yep mm-hmm. I mean like I really really want an, a, like a, a spider an Indian Spider-Man movie yes because to tell you the truth I had the graphic novel mm-hmm. thinking I would read it yep <laughs> but yep. you didn't <laughs> I never touched the graphic novel. I so I ha- I had it when I was in high school. I do not know where that graphic novel is Ooh. now. But like Spider-Man <laughs> India that came out like in the early 2000s, he didn't look like that. He looked like just a regular dude dressed in a Spider-Man shirt wearing Aladdin's pants. Yep. Oh, that's it. And this movie just ramped up the art design. You know, gave him the hair, gave mm-hmm. him all these gold bangles, that freaking yo-yo web thing that he used, which that was looked so, so cool. amazing. It was very uh, amazing. So cool. Like, he had one of the best web swinging sequences, I would say. And not to add a thirst portion, but without the mask. <laughs> Pretty attractive. Just saying. Okay, He's that's, a that's cartoon. It. Shut up. Lola Bunny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know some people who would go for Nala. <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah. It, 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 Are you? Those No, I'm not. But those animators knew what they were doing when they gave her that do me face. Ugh. Okay, so oh. just saying, it is it is okay to be attracted to animated characters. It's just, you know. It there has to be a limit. Like, yeah, there is a limit, but you know. Yeah. yeah. If there is a limit, Spider-Man India is not it. Yes, Okay. definitely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> But I'd th- probably draw the line at Nala. No, but that being said, um, mm. I don't know. I, I read no judging. Some- <laughs> no, I heard the judgment. Um, no, we don't kick shame on this podcast. <laughs> no, we don't. We- I'm just facing. <laughs> When we're um, off the podcast, though. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I read somewhere that there were 280 different Spider-Man designs in Jesus. this movie. Jesus. Uh, uh. Child, uh, no, no, never mind. Are you trying to count out from your memory? No. Oh, oh, okay, I thought you were. No. I mean, like, there were a few who stood out, like Spider T Rex. <laughs> oh, that was so stupid. Mm-hmm. I love Spider T Rex. That was so adorably okay. stupid. Okay, so while we're at it, let's name our favorite Spider people. Go for it. Go for it, you first. I already mentioned, like, Indian Spider Man. Okay, mm. okay. Okay, um, besides that, fine. Um, I love how Peter Parker has a baby here. And yes. he's just like so domesticated. <laughs> I know I I was gonna say I relate to Peter B. I was Parker. gonna say Aww. he reminded Aww. me of you. Cause, <laughs> Cause I know where he's at right now. <laughs> he's me. Yeah, he's got his little baby. Like he carrier. would be all preachy about isn't it isn't it isn't it a fulfilling? Doesn't it, does it make you feel better to hold a baby? Because it fucking does. Oh, look at you! Yeah, he's got the so, baby carrier and everything, and the the little robe on over his spider suit. It's it, like it, he yeah. can never get his full spider suit on this he, this guy. And I think he was wearing slippers at some point. <laughs> I think he was wearing bedroom slippers the yeah. whole time yeah. mm-hmm. with his mm-hmm. robe. Yep, yeah, exactly. So that. Um, jumping off from the first one, it was also a memorable character, and I like how they still um, mm-hmm. established this friendship with Miles and yes. how mentorship, it, mentorship, Mentor. as they say. So, yeah, and I also love Spider Gwen. She's just like so cool. She's like the cool girl I've always wanted to be. With okay. her ballet flats and her chucks. Mm-hmm. And Peter B. Parker, of course, is played by Jake Johnson from yes, uh, New Girl. New Girl. Girl. And uh, Gwen Stacy, we mentioned earlier, is Haley Steinfeld. Haley Steinfeld, who is also on in Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Um, Hawkeye, Billy. Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, wow. it's Andrew's birthday. Dad jokes. 
I know. I was like, I'm so surprised I didn't crack the dad joke this time. <laughs> I'm proud of you. It of me or you're, my... He should be proud of me. You're I'm so proud of her. Different. You're so different now that you're 25. I know. Yeah. Hmm. I'm more mature. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, yeah, go ahead. Go my ahead my favorite. favorite Spider-Man was Cowboy Spider-Man. Oh, really? I thought you'd go Cow- with someone else, but okay, I'll, get, no, 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 I'll, no, I'll let, let you roll with this. Cowboy I'll let Spider-Man this. or Web Slinger. <laughs> <laughs> That's his name. That's his name. He's Web Slinger. Okay, okay. Okay. I'm With- Web Slinger. <laughs> Web Slinger is the and, best. And his horse. <laughs> his horse has a mask. Oh, yeah. Why does your what's horse the, wear a mask? What's the point of the mask? It's for his secret identity. <laughs> so no one can tell who he is under the mask. Hey. Horse, don't don't be horses. <laughs> if there's such a thing. no, I'm mean saying no, no. I, I another reason I love um, Web Slinger is because that entire exchange between Miles and and, and Web Slinger that is right out of a Spider Verse comic book where he introduced himself and he did ask why does the horse wear a mask? It's so folks don't recognize him. But what they cut out was the next bit where Web Slinger reveals that he has a psychic connection with his horse. He calls it his rider Ooh. sense. <laughs> rider sense. <laughs> okay. All the puns. I love the puns. I see it. I see. I see why he loves that. Yeah. Uh, it's so dumb. I mean, like, I love it. <laughs> it's a horse in a mask. I mean, who's gonna hate a horse in a mask? I don't know. I don't know. But, um, but of course, know. you know, all the fun stuff, all the silliness, but, all of that. You forget all of that when you see who's leading this army of spider people against the mul- the problems with the multiverse. And it is Spider-Man 2099, Miguel hey, O'Hara. I didn't get to say who my favorites were. Yeah, let him. I just, thought you did. No. I thought you were going with Peter B. Parker. No. I, I went with Peter hers. B. Parker. I, I actually went, went, went with a lot. India. Of, I went with a lot. I'm sorry. I, I was yes, a hoarder did. today. I'm sorry. But I'm still so surprised with me because he didn't mention the one I was thinking about. Who were you thinking, thinking about? about? Oh my god, you're forgetting the 1960s animated Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I can do anything you can! And then you just see him swinging. Not moving. I mean, like, not moving his arms, but, you know, swinging still. Animation was expensive in the 60s. Okay, okay. And then there's this one more character that I love. Okay, just oh because he was from the 90s. Mm-hmm. The rise of Ben Riley, a Scarlet Spider. Like, one of those... Like, Big Spider-Man fans, they, he, they would know who this guy is. But another bonus is he was voiced by Jake Peralta, uh, <laughs> Andy Samberg. Yes. Andy Samberg. Like I didn't know. Like when I saw the cast, I was like Andy Samberg. Who the? Oh my god! Don't tell him he was Ben Riley. Yes, he was. This brooding guy in the back, this emo, stupid brooding guy in the back, is voiced by fucking Jake Peralta. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. You want to explain who Ben Riley is? Yes, please do. Ben Riley. Oh my God, really? Yeah, I'm gonna go out for coffee. This could take a while. I'm yes. So there was I'm this not as well versed because as in the 90s are. they tried to shake up the comic books because it's it was a failing fault. industry. We blame Marvel for this. So they tried to shake up Spider-Man stories and replace Peter Parker with this clone called Ben Riley. That's it. That's, That's all you need to know. No, as a but for years fan. he thought he was the real one. Let's not get into that. It's pretty messy. It was okay. so messy. It ran for like what four years. Four years. Oh my god, I hated that. But it's Jake Peralta. Mm-hmm, Wait, mm-hmm. can I can I see one more? I know I'm hoarding at this Go, point. Go, knock yourself out. Hobie it, is the coolest person on earth. On Spi- the multiverse. Spider Punk. Yes, Spider Punk. How can you not like a Spider Man who brings a freaking guitar in yeah. battle? I and love his art. His art is so. Um, it's so. It's uh, so reflective of his character. Yes, yes exactly. It's anarchy. It's, yes, it's you. It's the UK Sex Pistols kind mm-hmm, of art, absolutely. right? The, he was that, like a walking album cover. Exactly. Yep. He was so cool. <laughs> Magazine and, cutouts, newspaper yeah. cutouts. Man. And even Miles himself said, "Like, oh, how are you still so cool without your mask?" I mean, like. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, this is one example of how mixed media like the whole art style is because mm-hmm. there was no one distinct art style yeah. for this whole movie uh-huh. that's true that's how overindulgent it was yet you don't care but the, the thing about spider punk was yes he looked like an album cover only trouble he looked like all of the album covers at the same time <laughs> exactly but, and, but it still didn't look messy it no, just looked so it, cohesive beautiful yeah, I love and he, and he was so cool. Ah, and he another was, one to add the thirst portion. <laughs> he was played by Daniel Kaluuya. Yes, Kaluuya. 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 You're All thinking right. of. I'm the thinking drink. of alcohol. Yes, because <laughs> drinking is bad. No. Um, um, excuse me. 
<laughs> How is drinking bad? Mai takes a sip. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, it's I, only I, bad when you're old when you have to pay for it the following day. I, I felt bad for Miles <laughs> because Spider Punk is so freaking cool, mm-hmm. and clearly Gwen is got, has got something going on with him. Yeah, they, they they they're just both so cool that they're kind of on the same wavelength. They they probably both in a band. I and guess she they have leaves, that music. She has a toothbrush in his house. I mean, well, I mean, well. she she has a drummer. He's a guitarist. She's so. wearing his chucks. They have the same foot size. I don't know. I mean, I guess it was. She implied. might have freakishly large feet, or he might have f- have freakishly small feet. Okay, either yeah, or. It's fine. Okay. it's fine. No yeah. judging. Mm. No judging. Mm. He, um, you know, if this were live action, like I feel like a young Lenny Kravitz could play him because he like Damn. just reminds me of real Lenny Kravitz. Yeah, that could work. That but could but work. you know, this is animated. Not not putting it to a live action because we know how disastrous that can be. <laughs> Hence, uh, the Disney live action movies. Not disastrous, but just not as magical. Yes. But anyway, last thing about Ben Riley. So, like the '90s publishers thought that the way to be successful was to make all their silly costumed heroes grim and gritty and angsty. Mm-hmm. Ah, and Andy Samberg just nails it with every line that comes out of his mouth. He's brooding and he's the angsty. dude's a he's, dude's an he's, animated he's, edge lord. He's posing dramatically in every shot for no reason whatsoever. No, I can't go right now. I just found out I was a clone. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch it again because I did not realize it was Andy Samberg. I didn't. I, I didn't until I checked. I read up exactly, on, but like knowing that you need to see it, it again. Yep, it makes yep. it funny. Yeah, yeah, it'll make it funny. Like I started laughing at my uh, laughing, remembering the yeah. scenes where he was at, and then I remembered. Oh my god, it is Andy Samberg. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I mean, I never could take Ben Riley as Scarlet Spider, a Scarlet Spider, seriously, because how edgy are you when your costume was basically. A denim hoodie with the sleeves ripped off. I mean, the red, you know, web shooter, exposed web shooters was yeah. kind of cool. That's basically just how Gen Z people dress these days. <laughs> That's not a knock on the on you know on the Gen Z. Oh my god! On the Gen, on the on the Gen, Gen Z. Z. Oh my god! That was so boomer. Now that you're how old 25. are you? What the hell, man? I'm, I'm you're, Gen you're, Z. You're, you're, you're so. You want to see me take a selfie? You're <laughs> so different now. Zero point five camera. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Okay, uh, earlier you were getting to Miguel O'Hara. Spider-Man 2099. I did not think a spider here would out Batman Batman. He's, <laughs> I, 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 he did. He kind of out Batman he, Batman yeah, for he, a spider. He lost his family. He's angsty. He's he, got a mission that no one can stop him. He wrecked another universe. Just because he, he wanted happiness. Yeah, basically he stole another person's life. I yeah. didn't know Oscar Isaac could be this angsty. In animated form. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, but that's it worked. Amazing. Like, it really worked. And I love how they pointed out, like, you're, you're all of us spider people are funny. You're the only unfunny <laughs> one. <laughs> it's so freaking meta. It is It's meta. so freaking self-aware. This movie was pretty self-aware in itself as well. Yes, it absolutely was. Mm-hmm. They could have called it across the meta verse and, you know, it still would have made mm-hmm. sense it would have somehow. Worked. It would have worked. And And somebody pointed out to me, just this morning, somebody pointed out to me, so he's Spider Man twenty ninety nine. That's not so far from now. Fuck you. I was like, it, it seemed pretty far back well, in the nineties. <laughs> so you mean to tell me we could actually have superpowers? If you're planning to live another seventy six years, yeah, I guess you could be. I don't. So bye. <laughs> just let me know. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just find out from heaven or hell or wherever I end up. Yeah, but seeing as you're 25 now, you oh, know, yeah. you'll be 101 then. I don't want to see you in tights. <laughs> We're men. We're men in tight. tight, uh, tights. Tight. <laughs> Synchronization. <It's> mm. <laughs> All right. Um, we've talked about some of our sp- favorite spiders. Um uh, how about our favorite parts? Oh, jeez. That's, that's hard. That's very hard. I know it's a tall order, but... I can name one okay. off the top of my head. Across the Spider-Verse, that was your favorite part? No. <laughs> it's my favorite part. <laughs> oh, my God. It's even worse in person. <laughs> <laughs> no. <clears throat> my favorite part would have to be the Mumbatan... Um, the Mumbatan web swinging sequence where they were trying to save that was insane that was I mean, my like, favorite part but like, okay I, go like, I, I mean like how can you take your eyes off of that everything was 
it was so kinetic. I read your review. Oh, thank you. Everything was so kinetic. <laughs> Perfect word to describe the whole movie, yes. especially in that sequence. Mm-hmm. You you're, you couldn't it, you couldn't peel your eyes away from the screen at that point because every spider had had their own distinct movement, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it, you were just dying to you know for for the camera to stay put on one spider just to see how defined their movements are. Yeah, you know how how. Indian Spider Man would have to work around his yo yo. Mm-hmm. You know how Spider Punk would be more aggressive and angry ish with how he moved with his guitar. And of course, Gwen just being graceful in your Miles being so your generic Spider Man. Hey, Wait, come on. Well, he's from, you he's know, pretty cool. He's, he's cool. He's cool. He's in Jordans. <laughs> well, not, not in that. Well, he, um, he has Jordans. I was in Jordans. Oh, okay. okay. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question about that part. Yeah. So they know that Miles is not supposed to be in this dimension. They know that there's something in the movie called that they call canon events. Things that absolutely have, have to, to happen. happen. It's like basically their version of like um Doctor Who's fixed points in time. Certain things absolutely have to happen. They cannot change. They cannot be altered. You can't prevent them. But none of the other Spideys stopped Miles from doing his thing when they were saving all the people in Mumbatton. Gwen tried. tried. But she was the only one. They were busy saving people. Huh. Yep. Wouldn't they save more if they stopped Miles? If they stopped Miles? But they, I think they were focused on their own parts of the timeline, obviously. They wouldn't really yeah. be aware at that present moment. It I was just, only Gwen who yeah. let him go. Hmm. She tried. That was cool, though. Yeah. That whole sequence where he dives to save um, Indian Gwen Stacy. Not Indian Gwen Stacy, but, you know, the version of... The police the, captain. The yeah, police her captain. dad. Yeah, mm. That was pretty cool. That was crazy. Mm. I can make it. But, yeah, that was, a, that was an incredible sequence. Yeah. And I think just, well, already in spoiler territory at this point, if you've listened this far, but I think just the concept of Miles really not supposed to being a Spider-Man. Because like th- that... He was the anomaly. Exactly. That was, so, that was like a gut punch. That blew my mind. I mean it, like... It made so much sense. This it is, does. This is what... Okay, in essence of the character of Miles Morales, he is the original anomaly in the comic books because mm-hmm. he's the only one from a separate universe coexisting with the regular universe. Mm-hmm. Because, it, um, yeah, because Miles... Because Miles is from the Ultimate Universe yeah. and he's back in the 616 universe. Because he now. was so popular, they brought him over to the regular universe. Mm-hmm. Just like... Because the, in the early 2000s, Marvel came up with they called their Ultimate line of books. Which was supposed to be a fresh start where you didn't need to know what happened in the last 60 years. You could just pick up issue number one and you start from there. So it's it's basically for a new audience. So they had Ultimate Spider-Man. They had um, the Ultimates, which is basically Avengers. They had hmm. Ultimate X-Men. And everything started from issue one like there had never been anything before and Miles Morales came about towards the end of Ultimate Spider-Man when that Ultimate Universe's Peter Parker died pretty much what we saw in the last movie Mm -hmm. except that in this universe he gets shot yeah he dies bleeding out and Miles is inspired by his heroism and he becomes you know he puts on a mask and because his story was so well told and it was so popular eventually they just ported him over to the regular Marvel Universe Mm -hmm. wholesale so he still is one of the more he's always been an anomaly yep yep yeah so that that whole reveal of how he shouldn't actually be so it's like well that all makes sense because in his head he's like the hero he made things happen in the last one Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. in fact when you really love the first one and then now you realize that he's actually the anomaly they're the actual reason why things are so fucked up right now. Yes. You feel how he feels, that disillusionment mm-hmm. of everything, absolutely everything. So you kind of understand how that kind of messes Im- you up. Imagine, imagine like for the character of Miles. Yeah. 15 year old, trying to figure things out. You're growing up. Mm-hmm. And then somebody tells you that. Yeah. You're not supposed to be here. Yep. Damn. And that, that's, that's a load. That one thing mm. that you think makes you special wasn't even for you. That's fucked up. Can you imagine how how emotionally distressing that can be mm-hmm. yeah. to a fifteen year old, and to think he has to think about saving his dad. Yeah. Oh. 
And that that heaviness of all these hundreds and hundreds of spider people telling you, don't do it. Don't save your dad. It's one person versus all these multiverses. Mm -hmm. Imagine all the people you're going to save. So there's this cognitive dissonance happening. Of course, you want to save the multiverses, but you don't want to see your dad die. It's so a question that, of self against the better of the of everything else. Okay, what would you choose? I wouldn't. I would have a hard time. Tough call. Tough it, call. It, it right? really is a tough call. Really, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the superhero. <laughs> right. Mm. So even if you didn't have to make that decision, just putting yourself in those shoes. And as a 15 year old, you're thinking about college. You're thinking about girls and all the confusion that comes with growing up. Plus that the heaviness of being a superhero, and this decision lies in your hands. Millions and millions of lives. True, but that's like a classic science fiction. It's like a Star Trek dilemma. It's like you know the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one and in this case the one is the person whose approval that he wants the most <laughs> the one person in the world who inspired him to even be a hero in the first place <laughs> I love that the, moment the, like <laughs> we're probably thinking of yes. the same thing like after um, this so, first fight with yeah with <clears throat> the spot <clears throat> who is I, I just remembered was Jason Schwartzman I know <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> but yeah going back um, there's this moment okay they saved um, Spot for now is uh, defeated for mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, his dad is just coming <laughs> from yeah. this fight with Peter because of that mess at the guidance office. But then, with Miles. Yeah, with Miles. Sorry, Peter. <clears throat> for Miles. And he, like Miles, as Spider-Man flies in, tries to get like, oh, what you thinking? You know? <laughs> and, he, and of course, the dad rants about, oh, my son is blah, 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 blah. And you know that cute little moment when he's like, well, you know, I'm going to try to give you his side. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Just let him be. Yeah. <laughs> That's and great. I, I like how he was even like trying to make modulate his voice. <laughs> yeah. He tr- so, so his own father wouldn't recognize him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still seeking that approval. And there's also that theme going on because I did also empathize with Gwen. It started off, this movie started off and opened with Gwen's point of view. Yes. And this is, you know, with her angst, with everything going on in her life as a teenage girl, mm-hmm. you know, being in a band and I guess yep. hormones and stuff. And, um, in her side of the multiverse, her best friend, Peter Parker, mm-hmm. actually turned out to be... The lizard. The lizard, yes. Yep. And, you know, she um, didn't realize it was him, accidentally kills him. Mm-hmm. She kills her best friend. Mm-hmm. And her father, who is the, you know, police captain, is, of course, out on the hunt for who murdered his daughter's best friend. And, you know, of course, he's looking out for spy, um ghost spider mm. or you know who he thinks murdered um, his daughter's best friend so it's like that dilemma on Gwen's part and when he does find out that it's actually his daughter it's so painful if you were in Gwen's shoes and you're like dad it's me would you arrest me and then he starts reading her rights like what the Fuck hell that man. shit I was like look on the one hand like I don't know if he would actually would have gone through with it, to be honest. I, I, I think same. he was like on autopilot because he was in shock. I think it was a, a coping mechanism like or maybe, a defense mechanism. Maybe the second he took the handcuffs out, he'd be like, wait, what am I, am I about to arrest my own kid? Yeah. I don't think he would have gone through with it. Maybe, but just hearing that I know. is the, like, painful. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't, I don't blame Gwen for being like, okay, what the fuck do I do now? I'll just go with these crazy other yep. spider people because yep. what do I have left here? My own father yeah. just tried to arrest me. And she <laughs> bared her soul soul to him and what? is it after he witnessed her save dozens of people no but I like the fact that you know the spotlight wasn't just on Miles you yeah. get to see Gwen's side yeah, I'll be yeah. Some, it wasn't even that short it was pretty prolonged mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you know and I like that relationship that, that was established because you don't know how heavy the load Gwen was carrying having to deal with her best friend's death right having to hide that big secret from her mm-hmm. father mm-hmm. for such a long time and keep denying that she's ghost spider and let's not forget like why <sighs> Peter in that universe became the lizard in the first place was because he just wanted to be special like Gwen. Because in that universe, special. no. In that, shut up. <laughs> in that I, un- I'm just surprised that the K-pop reference did not come from me. Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised anymore. I'm proud anymore. of you. <sighs> Here's the reason why I listen to K-pop now. 
sure. Okay. Let's go with that. But no, like, like, like in this universe, let's not forget the reason that Parker injected himself with lizard crap, with lizard, lizard DNA, crap, with lizard DNA was because this is a universe Ugh. where that radioactive spider bit Gwen, Gwen. Yeah. instead of him. So he, what just, wanted, he just wanted to be spe- It's been pointed out to me that it's acrylic, but yeah, with all up- due apologies. Thanks, dang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, yeah, it's just a lot of heavy stuff. Again, what you were saying earlier about a 15-year-old, she's like a little bit older than Miles. I think 15 too, or 16. So yeah, she's got all of that and her father wants to arrest her, so she mm. can't even look up to him. Yeah, and She can't even express herself because she doesn't belong, she doesn't feel like she belongs mm-hmm. in a particular group. Yep. Just because she's a freaking superhero. Mm-hmm. That's a load. Yeah. And that's what I love about this movie. As crazy as things get, as conceptually um, complicated this could get, it still boils down to teenagers growing up and all the complications that come with it. All yes. these feelings. Absolutely. You know, all these parental um, issues that might spring up. So it's still very human. For despite sure. Despite all the craziness. It's very happening. focused. Yes. You know, like this, despite... All this visual flair, you're never off track. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're never off track of the the key elements of the story or the narrative or the or or the main characters. Yeah, I agree with Mai on that whole human aspect, yeah. honestly, because like I've always maintained that no matter how crazy things get in your narrative, no matter what big crazy special effects or monsters, demons in other dimensions, whatever, um, you're not gonna care unless the characters are grounded in some kind of reality yeah. that you can, you know, you can empathize with. Yes. Right? You don't, we, like, we don't love Star Wars because of, you know, lightsabers and spaceships. That's just the icing on the cake. You like it because it's about this, you know, this young farm boy who thinks he has a bigger destiny than than farming crops. Yeah. yeah. That's you why know? I stopped caring about the Toretto family. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> are you caring or thirsting? Caring! Their family! They're family. Are you sure? They have okay. Sunday lunches together. With okay. Coronas. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wait. Wait. Where the hell are the Toretto's from? Because like in the first few movies, they were like kind of Italian American. Let's talk American. about Fast X in the next episode. They were like kind of Italian American. Let's can do we? Fast 1 through X. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let, let us know. Let yes. Us, let us know if you want us to talk about Fast X in the next episode. Testosterone. Does, does <laughs> but really, where the hell are they from? They were Italian American to begin with, ish, and then, and then they were hiding out in Brazil, and then they were hiding out in Cuba. We're off track. And then Back Rita to Moreno Spider-Man. is their grand, is their abuela, abuelita. Back to Spider Man. We'll talk about Fast X. And yes, I will thirst, but I still care about the Toretto family. Okay. Okay, fine. I still fine. do. I relate with Mia and, you know, the, you know, Big Brother. His as brother as is John Cena. Yeah. Does John oh, Cena I, look Latino in any I, shape, form, or size? I was trying to figure out who Mia was in Across the Spider-Verse was because I thought we were back. Oh, we're lost there. I was like, what? I okay. was just uh, saying Mia. I relate to Jordana Brewster as a little sister caring about her big brother. Fine. Okay, back to Spider-Man. Back to Spider-Man. <laughs> We're sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll talk about fine. Fast X. This is gonna happen. Apparently, I touched a nerve. This will happen. <laughs> this will happen. We're going to talk about Fast One all the way until X or oh Eleven when it comes God. out. Ooh, let's do a prep before Eleven oh comes God, out. I'm so four, excited. It's gonna be a four-hour okay. hour episode. Okay. It's a four-hour thirst. Two-part <laughs> special, just like the next uh, Fast movie. Anyway, Eleven. I love Back to Spider-Man. Human family. Human, yeah, human, human emotions, <laughs> relatable characters, and spiders, and that's why that's why you're able to get through all the craziness because these are characters you empathize with and care for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, there's cake on the table! Oh my god! This is a desk. Can we even eat in the studio? Is this a marshmallow desk? <laughs> <laughs> Do we need a maturity test at this point? You should turn 25 more often. Mm. Okay, mm. Um, going back for the end of time. Okay, so I guess 
uh, if both of you nerds can share some Easter eggs that we've seen in this movie. So many Easter eggs. I think the whole movie was made of Easter eggs, honestly. Yeah. Um, but um, well, the cool thing about it was that they were integrated so well that whether or not you know they're there, you're going to enjoy the film. But if you know they're there, you get even more out of it. You know, like whether or not how badly they match the artwork mm-hmm. or how out of place they seem, you you, you still accept it. Yeah, for I mean, sure. You 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 saw fucking Donald Glover. Mm. Yes. Who for oh the longest God. time fans have been clamoring for him to play Spider Man? He was he, he was, was the favorite on social media. He yeah. wanted to be yeah. Miles Morales for years. That's in, why in the MCU. It would be perfect in the MCU. That's would why be perfect. they. That's why they put him in a Spider Man T shirt for the premiere of Community season two. Yeah, <laughs> like shamelessly they put him in that T shirt. Yeah, but sadly he got too old, so they just gave him the uncle role in. But he's homecoming. childish, Gambino. Oh. Not anymore. Fine. He could be childish Gagambino. <laughs> <laughs> I accept. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> mature na siya, baka childlike na lang. Childlike Gagambino. Ang pangit. Oh my God. Uh, he still retains uh, some innocence. He's childlike. Gago. <laughs> Gago. Child, child like Gambino. <laughs> you could just send Spider Boy. What the hell, man? <laughs> was building on her childish Gambino. So the only logical step to take for somebody who grows up is he becomes childlike Gambino. You see? Oh Christ God, Almighty. This is so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> hey, you started it. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Gagamba is. <laughs> Spider in Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> More Easter eggs. There were so- <laughs> Wait, isn't there a Filipino Gagamboy? No! <laughs> si Bong Navarro <laughs> is Gagamboy. Hell who no! Had, <laughs> who, had, who had to fight King Ipisman. <laughs> <laughs> he fought a cockroach, dude! <laughs> 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 I can't. Please go back to Easter eggs. I'm sorry. I like. I like. So okay. So so Donald Glover, childish Gambino, has been has been you know was a front runner or he wanted to be Miles Morales in his younger days, and then they cast him as the uncle who becomes the Prowler. Mm-hmm. But the MCU version, right? Mm-hmm. And he even mentions, like, I have a nephew who'd be around your age. He tells Tom Holland that. Mm-hmm. And here, we actually see him in the full-blown Prowler outfit. And he's live action. He's surrounded by all these cartoon yeah. characters. And, I just, and he even checks out Spidey's outfit. He compliments him on it. I mean, there were Easter eggs on top of Easter eggs. Like, some of them I couldn't even name. Which, I, I, which Misha named a few. I, I liked, like, sorry. <laughs> No spider sense. Dumbass. I like. I bumped into the mic. I'm sorry. Um, one of the ones I really loved was when they had like a whole section for video game characters who had to be returned to their respective universes, and one of them was like a 2D villain from the 80s <laughs> those, Spider-Man. Cartoon. Those blocky stripes. <laughs> just just I mean, block, freaking pix- blocky freaking pixelated villains <laughs> called a pixelated bad guy called Video Man that Spider-Man had to fight with his amazing friends and his amazing animations and his amazing. Using non-animation. Not- <laughs> it's still one of the best moments, though. But um, going back to what we said earlier about how, like, um, whether or not you're familiar with all the Easter eggs, there's still something to be had out of this. And one of the biggest Easter eggs here was actually tied into the main plot in that all of these different universes, um, every iteration of Spider-Man that we've ever seen over the last 60 years exists somewhere in this movie. Mm-hmm. And they even get to the point where they show um, Maguire, and, uh, Toby Maguire. Mm. They show Andrew Garfield okay. living out their worst days in their lives Oof, yeah. as part of the canon, and yeah. the canon event that cannot be undone. In the case of Andrew Garfield, it was Gwen Stacy's father dying. In the case of Toby Maguire, it was Uncle Ben dying. It's sad they couldn't show 
um, Holland with Aunt May. But he got uh, he got a sh- that would have been cool. But yeah. he got a shout out. He got a shout out where somebody says something about that little nerd with Doctor Strange in yep, that one yep. universe. Yep. Oscar Isaac is ranting about the events of, of course, No Way Home. Mm-hmm. So um, there are Easter eggs upon Easter eggs, but because the writing is so sharp and the direction was so focused that you don't get lost and whatever is there is in the service of the story it's not the other way around it's not just the fan service movie i mean it is a fan service movie but even if you take away all the fan service it still works yeah because there is there is an actual structure to Mm -hmm. the narrative that's why this movie is great it's not just because it's a spider-man movie it's a superhero movie it didn't it's not just because it looks great it's the balance of the whole thing like they were able to get that's why they were able to get away with so much fan service so much easter eggs and so much of these you know overindulgence in terms of art style and even the soundtrack was amazing oh yeah it was Mm -mm. and even down to that really old meme of the spider Spider Man pointing at each other. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, uh, the meme with the Spider Man. Times a thousand. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes it work because we've seen that joke before. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it is a really, really old meme. But it's still funny for some reason because you see all these hundreds of Spider Man doing it, pointing at each other. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it's old, but it's still old, oldie but goody. I'd for sure. Say. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, the fact that my, my, who isn't a big comic book fan, really loves this movie mm-hmm. just shows or just proves the point that this movie does have a heart you know it's not just because it's a it's a superhero movie yeah. mm-hmm. you know it's or it's a spider-man movie it's really well made it's well written mm-hmm. it it's well developed it's been you know you could clearly see that the writers and the, the creators of this movie have really thought about where the story is going to go yeah. to, which is why i can't wait for 2024 Ugh. This is the one thing I hated about this movie is that the fucking cliffhanger. That fucking ending. <laughs> oh, fucking cliffhanger. Uh, I, I it was, was so mad. It was, it was, you know, like, it was almost as good or maybe, maybe, you know, I'm not that big of a Star Wars fan compared to Spider-Man, but I could say that this is probably better than The Return of the Jedi. I said it. Uh. Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. Okay, not a fan. Again, not that fine, big of a fan. Not that big of a fan. No, but it really did make me so mad because just when things were kept escalating mm-hmm. and escalating and escalating and you'd think, um, even if it's a two hour long movie, you didn't feel the length at all. So at some point, you're... While things are just getting worse and worse and worse, you're thinking like, okay, oh my God, how are they going to fix this? Mm-hmm. And they don't! <laughs> nope. nope. <laughs> no, Fucking mean, assholes! Because, because you, you would think they would wrap the movie exactly. the way the things were, go- you know, the you're, way the story was going. Exactly. And then you realize like, oh fuck, he fucked up. I was surprised like um, was when like, we were sitting <clears throat> in the Columbia screening room, how many of the members of the media who were there were surprised that it was ending on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, but it was announced like last year that it would be broken up into two because the story was just too big. Mm-hmm. And I totally fact, forgot about that. The first that. few posters and in fact a lot of the merch still says part one on it. Like the oh. action figures and things like that. They all say part one at the bottom. But the ones in the cinemas now, they don't say part one. I guess maybe they got scared that people would just, ah, I'll just wait for part two. Maybe it'll be on Disney yeah. Plus at some point. Um, it's infuriating but yeah that was a hell of a cliffhanger (gasps) they ended it at the point with the highest possible amount of tension but I think there's a little bit of hope there because I I, I like I like seeing um, the old gang the old gang that Gwen has rounded up to help save Miles' butt uh, but also, I'm kind of scared for Miles. <laughs> What's going to happen to him now? Yeah, his I'm, dad's probably going to die. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm really curious. Or maybe his dad's not going to die. I know? mean, like, I 2024 know. can't come any later. Because I really, really want to watch this movie. I'm just glad we don't have to wait as long as we did from the first movie. Because that was 2018. 2018, 2019, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 2018. So mm-hmm. it's like, we waited five years. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly years. math is not our strong suit It is not yep, yep, I yep. admit that weakness But yes We had to wait five years for that So Yeah So 2024 will be the release of Beyond the Spider-Verse And that's when we'll see How all of this will be resolved 
Um, whether or not we'll see even more crazy Spider-Man variants, or maybe they'll end up in a completely different corner of the MCU or maybe, the Marvel universe. Maybe we oh. get more uh, cameos. Tapos yun pala sobrang simple lang. Yeah, like I really want to... As in 2D lang. No, there's this one cameo Misha's been wanting and I know I want to see. I want to see Sentai Spider-Man. I want to see Japanese Spider-Man. There's Spider-Man. This, yeah, yeah this, this Spider-Man who transform like, transforms like a Power Ranger. Basically. And he has his own freaking spider robot. Oh. He has a giant robot. Like a, like a Megazord type robot. Which apparently robot. that's where all the Sentai shows were inspired. That's why the Power Rangers look like that. That's why you don't see their faces. Because they, mm. they were all just inspired by the success of this crazy 70s Japanese Spider-Man show. Which is weird because his robot does not look like a spider and is named Leopardon. But it transforms so it's badass. Maybe in the next one. Okay. Okay. I'm just glad it starts with an S and not an H. So, okay, yes, that is it for us. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, dirty minds, dirty, dirty minds. Okay, so those are the Easter eggs. And I guess it's safe to say that we do recommend it to mm-hmm. everybody. Um, people I know who are very hard to please in terms of superhero movies actually really loved it too. So... It's definitely something you should check out in the cinemas, in the fucking cinemas. If if somebody asks me what I thought about this movie, my reply is always 11 out of 10. Mm. This movie was just that good. That is an excellent review. I I see no fault with this. Yes. Yes. And it was so special that we had to get together and record live. Not Anja's birthday. It's the movie. (laughs) It's the movie, not your birthday. This is my nth 25th birthday. (laughs) (laughs) By the way. Yeah, so uh, I guess uh, any last words? Any last words for, okay, what are you, um, <clears throat> hope, <clears throat> wait, my voice. Maybe like the movie, we can end this at the cliffhanger. Nah, just kidding. We won't leave you hanging like that. But yes, we are the Subatours. Thank you so much for listening up all up until here. <laughs> It's been crazy. Mm-hmm. It is always um, even more insane when we get together and just perfect for this out of this world movie. If you have any uh, ideas or if you want to share as well, there were thousands and thousands of um, Easter eggs or moments that we would love to have mentioned, but we don't have time for. But feel free to sound off in our Facebook group. It's Subatours. We like movies. Just share our movie thoughts there. Lots of random memes as well, as well as news. So yes, join our group if you like nerdy movie stuff. And also you can follow us on our socials at Subatours Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. Spider Man, Spider Man. Why do you sound like little Nikki? I don't know. Oh my god. Adam Sandler. Popeye's chicken is <laughs> fucking awesome. And this is really getting off tangent. But yeah. yes, thank you for tuning in. I'm Mai. I'm Misha. I'm Andrew. Happy birthday, Andrew. Yeah. 25 again. Yeah, you can get Cologne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being how, the eldest in the room. How, uh, how yeah. long ago was 25 for you? Shit. Not that long. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Goodbye. (coughs) Holy shit. You know that Lego Spider Man sequence was animated by a 14 year old? What? Like, what the shit? What? Like, like some kid they saw on YouTube. Oi, can you do this for us? Fuck my life. What am I doing with my life? What are we doing with our lives?